All right. Get study. Yeah. I was All running right. a little bit late this morning. Had something work wise that I had to do this morning. Okay, and we've got lots of folks on with us. There's Debbie Nolan. Thank you guys for your patience with me. There's Redina. Hi, Redina. There's Cassie and Sherry and Lori's watching and Jan. Oh, all of those faithful ones. Rita, good morning, good morning. Donna and Jana. Been missing you, Jana. Sure hope an opportunity comes. You get to come back to retreat with us. Once a dream big girl, always a dream big girl. We hope some of you that's never attended will get to attend. Our next one is our couples retreat. The last weekend in June, it's in Kansas. It's at the Flint Oak Lodge out of Fall Rivers, Kansas. Beautiful, beautiful hunting and fishing lodge. The men, the men love it, but the men don't love it any more than us women love it. It's a gorgeous place. Two great big, huge lakes on it and uh, ponds and shooting stations to shoot clay pigeons or skeet if you want to. Just, it's a wonderful time. Hi, Cindy. Good morning. Good morning. Again, thank you guys for your flexibility. It was my fault. I was a few minutes late this morning, had something with uh, work come up. So um, <clears throat> we're just doing life together, doing life together. Speaking of doing life together, how about those scriptures today? Yeah. Hi, Tanya. Happy birthday, Tanya. We got to celebrate with her yesterday. And she took the day off to celebrate her birthday. She's a very, very special person in all of our lives. Um, Judges chapter 8, starting in verse 18 through 9, the 21st. I did read the right ones today, right? It's the 28th of, of oh good, it's the 28th of April. You never know with me sometimes. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. So we're, I mean, we continue the story of Gideon. I, there's so much that could be said, but I read it last night and then I reread most of it, at least for sure parts of it this morning. And then I listened to it, I think three times. And I, I, I'll tell you, I, something just spoke to me that I couldn't get away from. I kept seeking God. Um, this morning um, to make sure that I wasn't missing something. So I guess, I, I guess I'm really just supposed to, to share with you what's on my heart um, because it also, it's the same thing I got reading Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 44 through 24, verse 12. You know, this isn't either one of these scriptures in the physical realm isn't the most uplifting of scriptures. I mean, look at all Gideon had done. I mean, we talked about Gideon and we talked about things from Gideon's perspective in the last few days. But the people just, it's a repeated thing that just happens over and over and over again. Let me see if I find kind of just an example of what I'm talking about. Verse 28 today. Judges 8, verse 28. This is the story of how the people of Israel defeated Midian, which never recovered. Throughout the rest of Gideon's lifetime, about 40 years, there was peace in the land. I mean, wow. Let's keep reading. Verse 29. Then Gideon, son of Joash, returned home. He had 70 sons born to him, for he had many wives. So it goes on, and then... As soon as Gideon died, verse 33, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping the images of Baal. I mean, we read this and 40 years goes by in just a few sentences and just a few paragraphs when we're reading. So it seems like they just went from these major battles that they won that was unlike the battles we 
fight today, most of us, our battles for the most part aren't life and death. Now, sometimes they are, of course, we get a diagnosis from the doctor or, I mean, we've lost loved ones. There is a war going on right now. I, I understand that. But the war that they fought, the wars that they fought, I mean, we read about taking a sword and, and pushing that sword all the way through somebody, killing them. And I mean, it was gruesome. I, war is gruesome. I, I'm not sure unless you've been through that. And I have not. So once again, did I tell you I was just speaking this morning on what I got, what kept coming up to me in these readings this morning? I've never been through a war. And I know that my words can never do justice to what it must be like to witness deaths like what we've just read about. Killings. That Gideon had 32,000 soldiers and his enemy had 135. And then Gideon had 300 against 130. I, I, I don't know what that feels like, but I know what it feels like to allow a thought into my brain that I keep feeding and I keep feeding and I keep feeding until the next thing you know, I am in the depths of despair. I'm depressed. I can't see a way out. I don't know where the money's going to come from. I don't know where the help is going to come from for that loved one that I'm tormented over, or I don't know how I'm gonna get out of the pit I've dug for myself. I, I know what those kind of battles feel like. And, and we watched and read, I, I watch as I read, I don't know about you, but as I read, I can sometimes envision these battles. So I watch as I read battle after battle after battle. And let's, let's bring in New Testament because it's the same message for me. Jesus is alive and on the earth. There are those at this point in time in our reading in Luke that believe he is the, the prophesied Messiah. There are those at the period of time in which we're reading Luke 23 and 24 that believe he is going to be the new king that's going to set up a physical kingdom on earth. They have him in the flesh. His word speaks to them. I can't even imagine what the physical spoken words of Jesus Christ must have done to the people within earshot, especially those who believed. I, I can't imagine. I mean... The only thing that comes close to imagining that is what happens when he speaks to me in his still small voice to me. And that's nothing short of glorious for me. So they had him in the flesh. He was here. He was the savior. He was supposed to fix everything. And by golly, they killed him. They didn't just kill him. They they beat him, they brutalized him in ways that our human brain can't imagine because as they beat him, as they crucified him, supernatural things was taking place that the Bible says he was not, a, that he didn't look as though he was of human form any longer. I, I, I can't imagine. And whether it is the Israelites who after winning all these wars in the physical, watching Gideon, their leader, lead in supernatural ways because God was guiding him. God went out before him and fought the battles for him. I mean, we read the other day about uh, that first original battle being that, that God confused the enemies and they fought amongst themselves and killed each other. I mean, and, and the miracles that Jesus did here on this earth, I mean, we're still reading about it. We're over 2,000 years later. We're more than that thousand years later reading about Gideon and those. And in each case, the same things happen. The same things happen. So 
As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping the images of Baal, making Baal Berith their god. They forgot the Lord their God had rescued them from all their enemies surrounding them. They forgot that God had rescued them. They forgot all of the miracles and signs and wonders that went with Jesus everywhere on this earth when they laid him in that tomb. When he said the words that we read today, <clears throat> um, I don't have it marked. I think in today's reading, it wasn't that, uh, and Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. That's what it is. Verse 46. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. And hope died. Gideon took his last breath. 40 years of peace. Battle after battle after battle won. And hope died. And they went from worshiping the one and true God, the only God of everything, not just the universe, of everything into worshiping an idol that is physical in front of them. They laid Jesus in the tomb and, and his disciples scattered. It, it wasn't what they thought it was supposed to be. It didn't look like how they had prayed it would be. They had come up with physical fantasies of what the coming Messiah would do, what he would say, how he would react, and all hope was lost when he died. And I, I see the parallels in these two stories, but the sad part is, folks, I see the parallels of these two stories in my life. See, it's so easy for me to read on a piece of paper in this book, it's so easy for me to read the historical text and say, how in the world could those Gideonites do that? How could the followers of Gideon do that? They just had 40 years of peace. They were rewarded beyond their wildest imaginations for the obedience of following Gideon who was following God. How could they do that? I mean, it's just in a, it's this, this wide. <laughs> I mean, this, this far down the column in my reading, Things change that fast. It's even less than that in today's reading. It's it, it it's it's about this much in the days re, in today's reading, and all change because Jesus is dead. His physical body is gone. So they think. There's been times in my life when I felt as though God might as well be dead. Now praise God, He was in me. I never really did slip into a non-belief that God was alive and well. I, praise God I didn't. I did, even in my deepest, darkest pit that I, that I dug for myself, did know that God was alive and well. I just thought he was mad at me. I just believed the lies. I mean, that's what we're reading about in, with, with the Gideon followers. That's what we're reading about with the followers of Jesus here on this earth. They believed the lie. They believed the lie that he was dead, that everything they had hoped for was gone. There's been times in my life when I believed that everything I hoped for was gone. And I curled up in the fetal position on my couch and looked up the clock. You've heard this story many times and said, if the next 10 minutes, if this pain in the next 10 minutes doesn't kill me, I might survive. That is a true real life story in my life. Now that's been many, many years ago. So let's just talk about in the recent past, I've been faithful. I've been reading. I've been following God with everything in me. I've been following God at the expense of everything. I've been following God and not counting the cost. When God said, go, I send you out like a lamb among wolves. I did an early retirement from a, from a job of security, a job of benefits, a job of wealth, a job of, of retirement, a, I, I, when, when God said, go, I send you out, I went. When God said, go, I moved away from my family. When God said, go, I uh, to the best of my ability, 
I've lived my life as faithful as I know how to live for a, a little over 21 years now. I've seen miracle upon miracle upon miracle. I've received deliverance upon deliverance in my own heart. I've received the unparalleled, unconditional love of God inside of me in ways that I cannot find the physical words to say. And yet you let that one phone call come. And, and quite frankly, guys, <laughs> at least they had a physical body that they dragged down off of a cross and placed in a tomb that caused their helplessness and despair. At least the Gideonites had his physical body that they laid to rest that led to their Baal worshiping. Guys, sometimes it's not a phone call for me. Sometimes it's just simply a thought being planted, a seed of doubt that just like the Gideonites worship a physical idol, a bale like resemblance of a physical thing, they created that and made it into a God. I take a thought and I allow it to grow. And instead of doing what the Bible says, cast those thoughts down, take those thoughts captive, allow God to renew your mind. Stay in the word so your mind will be renewed over and over and over again. There's scriptures. I allow myself to get into a place that resembles what the Gideons were doing, that resembles what the disciples did. You know, it looks different now than it did. 30 years ago when I was curled up and it wasn't quite 30. It was probably 25 years ago when I was curled up on my couch, thinking the pain, sheer pain, not suicide, never suicidal, just the pain. I thought the pain was going to kill me. It was so bad. I've never before or since experienced the level of pain I was having that day. It doesn't look like that anymore. But if I'm not careful, I know through reading these scriptures, I know that if I don't immerse myself in this word every day, if I don't every single day of my life, seven days a week, I turn on my, my favorite teachers to continue to fill me up. If I don't turn on my praise and worship music sometimes not very often because i'm telling you what driving down the road when it's just me or it's just me and tom i'm going to be praying i'm going to be thinking on these things that are pure that are lovely that are wholesome what the bible tells us to do i'm so much better at it today but but what this did this morning is it jolted me i had a precious precious friend of mine precious friend of mine and her i think she i don't think she's turned 30 yet maybe she has I haven't talked to her in weeks and weeks. Haven't heard from her in weeks. Yesterday, she sent me one encouraging thing through a text message. And then I woke up to a string of them today telling me to take my thoughts captive. This is before I read into my Bible. Well, that's not true because I read my Bible last night first. But this morning, I woke up to her text encouraging me to take my thoughts captive, to let God deliver me from whatever bondage may be on me. You know, when I first started reading it, it was, oh, Lord, and I did, Lord, do I have bondage? Lord, what is prompting her? Lord, I know the Holy Spirit speaks to her. What is it? Search my heart. <clears throat> and then I read. And it just fits what we're reading today. I mean, do you understand that's what the reading is telling us today? It's telling us, first of all, how quick we fall into judgment. Mm -hmm. We judge those people that all of a sudden started worshiping Baal. Oh, don't tell me that you're any different than me. And then we judge those, uh, uh, those doggone disciples who spent all that time. I mean, all of us long to have three years 
three years, 365 days a year, living, eating, drinking, breathing with the physical Jesus Christ. I mean, we long for that rather than understanding that he himself told us when I leave, how much better for you is it that I go to my father because in my place, he'll send you far superior, the comforter. <sighs> so for me today, I didn't find so far, I'm still seeking him. What may be holding me captive today? I, I didn't see where I've started any kind of physical idol in my life. I, I, I'm still seeking, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see. Lord, Lord, if there be any darkness in me, even if it kills me, get it out. I want to be all you. I want to, I want to see you the way you see me, Lord. I want to hear the way you hear. I only want to do what you want me to do. And I only want to say the words that you speak to me to say, Father, I give myself to you right now today. Lord, take that, take that judgmental spirit away from me, Father. Thank you for this word that guides me, that is truth to me. That is the truth that guides me every single day. April the 28th of 2022, Lord. Let this word today be a light into my path. Thank you, Father, for speaking to me today. Thank you, Father. Psalms 99, the Lord is king. Let the nations tremble. We should be trembling at the thought of our king. Let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne between the cherubim. Let the whole earth quake. The Lord sits in majesty exalted above all the nations let them praise your great and awesome name let me praise your great and awesome name father god your name is holy mighty king lover of justice you've established fairness you've acted with justice and righteousness throughout my land father exalt the lord our god bow low before his feet for he is holy oh yes Verse 9, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, right in the city in which you are today. For the Lord our God is holy. On this thankful Thursday, there is so, so, so many things to be thankful for. There's always, always something to be thankful for. Proverbs 1, Proverbs 14, 9 through 10, fools make fun of guilt. <laughs> I, I just think that fits the scriptures today. Fools make fun of guilt, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can fully share its joy. Yeah, all the way from my reading last night, to waking up to some love-filled texts of correction, of searching, of seeking from my friend this morning, to reading of the death of Gideon, to the physical death of Jesus Christ, into the Psalms, and ending with the Proverbs. I'm so very thankful today. <laughs> 